Assalamu alaikum everyone. Inshallah, this message finds you all safe and healthy. Here at the Shia Muslim Council Mental Wellness Committee, we would like to help you with some tips and guidance on how to navigate this very unusual and uncertain time of social distancing and sheltering in place. For most of us, it's been about a month or so that we've been strictly complying with the shelter at home orders in our cities and our communities. And that has resulted in us trying to navigate all of the things that happened outside of our homes from within our homes with all of our family members there and all of us trying to achieve different tasks and goals at the same time. While we are all grateful for the privilege of being able to have a safe place to stay at home and to take care of our physical health, it is also something that can cause friction and tension and anxiety, especially due to the uncertainty of this time. We don't know exactly how long this will be going on for, and sometimes with a lot of unknown and uncertainty comes a lot of anxiety. So I'd like to share some advice with you to help reduce some of the uncertainty and anxiety that you might be feeling. My first tip would be to get up and get ready every day. Now before, when we had a day off, we might want to stay in our PJs or comfortable clothes because we want to have that downtime and that signaling to our brain that it's a day to relax. We need that same signal to happen at the moment. Some physical way to help us transition from the relaxed part of our day to the functional or the uh, goal-oriented part of our day. So. Even though you don't need to be dressed in your traditional work clothes, you don't have to put on a suit and a tie or something formal, just getting yourself ready for a few minutes in the morning helps you to feel ready to achieve whatever goals are on your to-do list for that day and changes your mindset, makes you feel better about yourself. The next thing related to that would be to create some type of schedule. Now I'd like you to be very careful with routines and schedules and timetables because sometimes we can become very attached to them and that actually creates more anxiety. I don't want you to create a routine that has so much to do that when you look at it, you're feeling anxious that you're not going to achieve all of those things today. Set some goals that are realistic and achievable and if one of those things on the list doesn't get done, it's okay, it can be moved to the next day. Please don't have too high expectations of yourself, of your children, or anybody in your home. We're all trying to figure this out together. All of us are trying to find ways to be productive and to achieve almost as much as we were doing before within our homes, but it's really not realistic. We're all trying to share space, to share devices. It took me a long time to find a little spot in my house to be able to record this video for you. So give yourself grace and be flexible with your schedule. Schedules are helpful because they give you some predictability to your day, especially for younger people in your home. It gives them a sense of security and predictability. They know what is expected of them, what their day is going to look like. So when they wake up in the morning, if they see a schedule posted on the refrigerator, then at least they have some sense of security and normalcy and consistency. And that really helps to reduce anxiety and that overwhelming feeling of how will we get through another day of being at home. But remember, be flexible. If you feel the need to go off schedule, that's okay. Don't beat yourself up about it. It's fine. It's healthy. It's normal. You need to really listen to your body, what it needs physically and what it needs mentally. And the same with others in your home. When you feel like your children need to step away from schoolwork, when you need to step away from work, when you need to step away from the housework, let yourself do that. Don't put too much pressure on yourself and overwhelm yourself. You really need to take care of yourself so that you can avoid burning out and not feeling so depleted that you can't continue the next day. Another thing that would help to reduce anxiety is to greatly reduce your consumption of social media. Now, many of us want to check in with the news and find out what's going on. And honestly, for many people that I've spoken to, both personally, family and friends, and professionally with my clients, they always let me know that the more news they watch, the more articles they read, the more they look at social media, the more anxious that they feel. So if you can avoid that and not do it on a daily basis, that would be great. If you feel the need to check in every day, set yourself a time limit of 20 minutes and make sure it's in the morning. You don't wanna be doing this at nighttime 
because it will get your nervous system riled up and you'll have a hard time winding down and getting to sleep. So really reduce your intake of social media and news media. Follow the guidelines of the CDC to make sure you're protecting your health. But other than that, really try to avoid consuming all of these frightening statistics and negative stories that are around us all the time. Speaking of sleep, this is something that's very important for your physical and mental well-being. Try to have a consistent routine of waking up and going to sleep at the same time every day. When you go to sleep, your body is essentially healing itself, renewing cells, and helping the immune system to strengthen. So try not to skimp on sleep. It may seem that you don't need to wake up and go to sleep at a consistent time since you don't have to be anywhere, but it again helps with that sense of normalcy and routine in the home and helps you get the rest that you need so that the next day you can get up and tackle the tasks that you need to do. Hopefully you found these tips helpful and we'll be back soon to share some more advice on how to navigate this time. Until we meet again, Salaamu Alaikum.